Hello world, my name is Andy Silvers and on today I'm going to give a brief review of the HP Chromebook X2 11. Alright, so if you're not familiar with this channel, I am an author, YouTuber, and award-winning filmmaker. I talk about writing, technology, and other random stuff. So I hope you like the video. If you do, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for further content. Now at this point, I am not monetized, so if you want to help support me and content that I produce, you'll want to check out some of my books. Don't worry, I've got books for literally all age ranges, going from ages 3 to 6. I have a great book called The Very Colorful Caterpillar with lots of pretty pictures. For ages 8 to 12, I have a coming-of-age story for uh, children uh, that is a nice chapter book for uh, children in elementary school and beginning middle school. And I have an adult book for ages 16 and up, which is a contemporary fantasy adventure called Solomon Grando vs. the Jupiter Witch. All of these books are available now on Amazon.com and Barnes and & Noble, and all of them help to support content like this. Alright, so today I want to give a very brief review of the HP Chromebook X2 11. Uh, this is not a brand new tablet. This tablet has been around for quite a while now. Uh, one of the reasons that I waited to review it is partially because I didn't have it before. I didn't have it to review but also because of pricing. So the HP Chromebook X211 is a premium Chromebook tablet from HP, which is currently my favorite tech company. Um, it is an 11 inch screen size. It has obviously Chrome OS, uh, touchscreen display, detachable keyboard. It's very, very much in line with the Surface Pro in terms of the Microsoft Surface Pro in terms of design, but it definitely does its own thing in a couple of unique areas. So I bought my Chromebook X211 uh, about a month ago, so this is basically a one-month review. So the first problem with mine would be the uh, camera system just refused to work in any way, shape, or form. Uh, however, I was able to fix this eventually with a software update. And you might think, well, how's that even a problem? You're supposed to do software updates. Well, here's the thing. I got the, I got the confirm book. I did all the setup. It took like 45 minutes to an hour to get it fully set up with my name and with all the updates. And so I thought that HP had uh, updated this Chromebook via Wi-Fi with all the latest updates, but they had not. The version of Chrome OS on this device was not up to date. It was not the latest and greatest update, which uh, was the reason the camera wasn't working because the hardware and software weren't speaking to each other. So if this happens to you, simple, just go to the menu and just do the latest software update. Uh, the other slight issue is just Wi-Fi signal range. Now, my house is very large, and I live in the basement, and the Wi-Fi router is upstairs as far away from me as possible. So it's not likely to affect you, but just be aware that the Wi-Fi range that I've experienced is not super-duper far, but I suspect this won't affect many of you. Generally speaking, I do want to praise this device. Overall, it is a great Chromebook product. Um... Uh, there's been a lot of videos about this device thus far, so I don't want to spend forever just talking about specs and features because that's not really the point of this video, so, but I will cover them briefly because I think it's relevant. So it has a Snapdragon 7C processor, which is an older Snapdragon sort of ARM-based chip, not very powerful, which is one of the problems with the device, but uh, it is still very good. Uh, it has a a high resolution 3 by 2 aspect ratio display it is um, the display is 2160 by 1440 pixels which at an 11 inch screen size is more than enough it has my favorite aspect ratio on all computers and tablets which is 3 by 2 it is great for productivity not as good for video watching but it's still perfectly serviceable 
and I really love the aspect ratio. The audio is handled by Ben and Olufsen, although they don't do an amazing job here because they don't have a lot of room to work with, so be aware the speakers are not the greatest. The device has two USB-C ports, which is a really nice to have. It means you can charge the device and plug in some sort of external accessory at the same time. It has a fingerprint reader in the power button, which is on the top of the device. Uh, it has a obviously a touch screen and pen support. This device comes with an HP Active uh, stylus. It is not the greatest stylus experience, not because the stylus itself isn't very good, but largely due to the nature of the 7C processor not being very fast. Chrome OS is very good these days. It features the ability to download Android apps like Need for Speed and Angry Birds, if you're into that. Uh, and the device also has an SD card reader, a micro SD card reader to be specific. And I have, in fact, upgraded mine with a 64 gig micro SD card, which is a very nice to have as a lot of the competition do not offer this feature. The device comes with a detachable keyboard that is very much in line with the Surface Pro. The keyboard is not very big, uh, making this device perfect for children and students. However, it is still serviceable and it does have a nice sort of rubbery plasticky finish that I actually kind of like. Uh, it snaps on to the bottom of the device very much like a Surface Pro, and I find the key travel to be completely reasonable. The front facing and rear camera are not very good, generally speaking. They are both pretty high resolution for tablet cameras, but resolution is not everything because the dynamic range and bit rate of the images just isn't high enough to deliver a quality picture or video experience, but to be fair, most people buying a Chromebook are not looking to shoot the next James Cameron Avatar film. A couple of conveniences of the device include the front-facing speakers. I really appreciate that the speakers are facing towards you rather than away from you or towards the floor. Another convenience is that the pen snaps to the side of the device magnetically, making it much less difficult to lose it. And the last convenience is that everything is just included with the device. The kickstand is in the box, the keyboard's in the box, the pen's in the box, the charger's in the box. Uh, it's all in the box, and there's extra pen nibs if you need it. It's not like Apple or other companies where you do have to pay extra to get all these what I would call relatively basic accessories. So this is truly a nice device. But the thing that I like most about this Chromebook is just the quality of the product. It is all metal and glass, it is extremely well built, it has weight in your hand, which I personally prefer over lightweight devices that feel cheap and plasticky, a bit like some of uh, On's um, tablets. Uh, On is a company owned by Walmart. Um, it just is premium all around. It is a very premium device. The screen is no exception. It has a fairly high resolution and more importantly, it has a fairly high peak brightness of 400 nits. It would have been very easy for HP not to include this simple but important feature, but I really appreciate it as it makes web viewing and movie watching extremely convenient even in bright office or school environment. The last thing I want to talk about is, is this device for you? If you like Chrome OS, then this device is certainly up for consideration. Uh, the main thing I want to say is pricing. Uh, HP originally priced this device, I believe it right around $650 new, like MSRP, and by no means is it worth, is it worth that much. You can buy, um, an Android, like, Galaxy Tab S7, S7 Plus, and even, I think, the new S8 for a right around that amount. So, those tablets have a lot more horsepower and overall features. And so I would not recommend getting this device in that case. But the price has been marked down significantly since it first was released. It went down to 500, then it went down to 400, and when I bought it from Best Buy new, it was 300, 299, which is a great price for this product. This product sells great and works great as a 299 tablet that you have for entertainment, um, internet browsing. Uh, maybe you can put this in your kitchen when you're looking up recipes and your fingers are dirty and you don't, don't want to get them all over your fancy laptop. And of course, for kids, this is great for educational use and they can play all their favorite Android games when they're done with their schoolwork. 
So yes, this is a recommendation for me. Not a perfect product. The uh, Snapdragon 7C is several years old. That is the chip that powers the device. Uh, that chip is not very powerful, but it is serviceable. The device has 8 gigs of RAM. Be careful not to accidentally purchase the version with 4. I mean, it, it, if you want the version with 4, you can get it maybe, maybe for kids or for people who only do one thing at a time. But Chrome OS with several things open can be a bit sluggish with 4 gigs of RAM, so I would ha highly recommend getting 8. So if you find this device for less than $300, it's probably either used or it's the 4 gig version and I would steer clear of that one. However, with 8 gigs of RAM, everything runs fairly smoothly and any limitations of performance are definitely from the 7C uh, CPU. Uh, there is a 7C Gen 2 CPU now available. Uh, it is not available in this product yet. Uh, HP has yet to update it. Uh, I feel confident that they will uh, per competition from Lenovo, for example, which makes a very competitive Chromebook tablet in a, in a similar sort of price range. If you're using the device for video watching, web searching, and games, you will be, generally speaking, be happy. I recommend this product. Uh, I would say maybe four out of five stars. I would give it five stars at the $300 price if the CPU was just a little bit better. It doesn't have to be a Core i7 1165 G7 in order, in order for it to be good, but I really would prefer like a Snapdragon uh, 888 or even the 865G or like I say the 7C Gen 2 CPU as opposed to what we have here but otherwise it is a definite recommend. If you like this video please hit like, please comment any questions you have. I do try to answer most questions as soon as I can. Uh, if you want me to do a follow-up video with covering a specific part of this tablet or tablet experience Please let me know in the comments. And like I said, please check, check out the books that I've written. They're all available at the links in the description. It really helps the channel when you check those out. And I will see you in the next video.